Guys, we're back at the ICF build. Today I want to go over two things, electrical primarily and the connection points between the wall and the truss system. So a few of you guys asked me to go over the connection points from the top of the wall plate to the trusses. So I'm gonna see if I, I'm gonna see if I can find the ladder. So now walking up to this top plate. Now I'm gonna show you guys what this connection looks like. I know there were a few questions regarding uh, this portion of the build and how it could be confusing. So if you think of a traditional build you essentially set your truss on the top plate and you can like toenail them and then go back later and either screw a Simpson SDS screw from the bottom um, to hold it down or you can install hurricane clips. This is just essentially another way to fasten it. So what we have is these brackets that were wet set into the concrete and they go down about 16, 14 to 16 inches. So they go down, it's a little J bolt. They sit in the concrete so the bracket sits right here. We set the truss right in the bracket and we just Tico nail them and these things aren't going anywhere. It made installation of these trusses simple and fast because all the layout is already pulled. So all we have to do is set the trusses in, fasten them and we're good to go. This truss system was set in a day. That other ICF build was set in five hours, I think four hours, five hours. It's quite a bit of space to cover and they were able to do that fast, which just kind of points to the fact that having that layout already determined made it really simple, really easy. Now I'm going to show you what we did on the gable end. So on the gable end, it goes a little differently. We have to run these brackets with the wall because we have to set this end gable. So what we did, we put a bracket every four feet on center. We brought this in about two inches because we want our siding to line up with the peak of this roof, the gable end going down along the house. We don't want there to be any bumps. So we pulled this in two inches. It'll allow half of an inch for the siding and it'll allow one and a half inches for a two by four flat against the side. It'll come out looking perfectly flush from top to bottom and there'll be no breaks. So that's how we fastened the roof system to this ICF house. There are multiple ways to fasten it. You could also just pour it, not put any brackets, and then you could bolt down a green plate on the top of that wall and then set your trusses on there. That's a way to do it. My only concern with that is if the walls aren't perfectly, you know, down to the eighth inch, perfectly flat, your roof system might be a little wavy. With these metal brackets, it, it allowed us to set all of these brackets on the exact same plane. If there is variation in that concrete wall, it's not gonna make a difference once we set those brackets because we can manipulate those and put those exactly where we need to put those versus a green plate, you just gotta lay it on top and you could shim it up. But I think this is a stronger way to do it and possibly a better way, in my opinion. So to start with the electrical, I'm gonna show you, first of all, the electrical comes in right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it underground and into the garage. When it gets into the garage on this wall, we're gonna run it up and over, over, over to these panels right here. So these are our two main panels right here because we have a 400 amp service to this house. So we have two panels and essentially we're just gonna balance everything out on these panels. So that's how we get the power into the house. There's two ways to accomplish this and the way that we're deciding to go about it we're just gonna drill a hole through the wall. So you can do a sleeve, but we're just gonna do one core hole through this wall. Again, could have planned it out. We didn't because it's not that difficult. We got a tool just to punch a hole through the wall. And then we'll just run it right up the wall and then over to these boxes. So that's how power will get to the boxes. Now, from the boxes, when we mount it on this dividing wall, which is another reason why we didn't do this wall in ICF, it allows us to easily run it up and into the house because it's all light wood frame. As you can see, everything is nicely labeled, looks really good. So as we work our way into the house, I wanna show you one box specifically that uh, kind of outlines what we, how we do this. So here we got one box, and as you can see, this chase going up to the ceiling, the wires come down into this box, and to get them through the wall, 
it's as simple as just cutting a little chase. I get a lot of questions and concerns from people saying, well, if I build ICF, then my trade partners who don't know how to install an ICF, they're not going to want to, want to do that with me and I have to find somebody else. It's not difficult. I, they're, they're, I mean, if you haven't worked with it, you know what you don't know, you don't know, but it's not hard to just run a little line through here. We use a Milwaukee chainsaw, those little small chainsaws. We just run a line straight through the foam. It makes a little bit of a mess, but it gets the job done and it's not difficult. Now, cutting in boxes, again, same kind of concept of a studded wall. So we cut the foam out and then we just screw it to this plastic stud in the ICF. Takes a little bit more time, but in terms of difficulty, there's no difficulty factor to the job. If your electrician doesn't know about it, how to install it, it's as simple as just cutting out some foam. Again, takes a little longer, not difficult. And then once you get into the main house, everything's wood framed. All the interior walls are wood framed. All the trusses are wood framed. Then it's the same as any other traditional stick frame build. One more thing about electrical. When we want to put, for instance, a light outside this door, I'm going to come outside real quick. If we want to put a light outside this door, all we're going to have to do now, option, option A is we can run this wire down over and down. That's one option. Or you just take a, a roto hammer bit, toss in a half inch hole in the siding, just poke it right out into a box. I mean, that's easy. Getting a, a half inch bit through a six inch wall is nothing. That's, and that's the one way to get fixtures on the outside or, or outlets on the outside. Guys, I hope this sheds some light on what it takes to build ICF. I hope it looks simpler going over these little details than it possibly did before. It's not that different from a traditional build. ICF has its differences, but ultimately it's nothing that can't be overcome. People make products that are supposed to be intuitive. If it's not intuitive, people aren't gonna buy it. Now there's always worries and concerns about it not being intuitive, but ICF is just that. I'm not sponsored, okay? I see the worries and the concerns from people. I will admit I had those same worries and concerns. I didn't really want to do it. But when we started it, I'm like, this is, this is a simple process. Once again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I would love to answer any and all questions you have. ICF is an amazing way to build. I want to make sure that if this is the route you want to go, there are no hurdles that seem too big to jump over. I just want to be there to help you guys out. This has been a great build. We, we got a ways to go. It's getting chilly outside, but we got covered, so that's awesome. So thanks for following along the build journey, and I'll keep you guys updated along the way. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I got a new camera for you guys, so you guys aren't watching some 1080p crap, okay? I want to show you what we're doing in 4K and better audio. I hope, uh, I hope it helps. Anyway, see you guys in the next one.